everyone. Welcome to this week's class on module three, looking at online motivation, interaction and engagement. I have a very special guest today, uh, Professor Kurt Bong uh, from Indiana University. Um, Kurt is a professor in instructional technology and he has been working in this field of online learning for over 20 years. Kurt? Ah, 34. Okay. <laughs> but, sort of kind of but I was in educational psychology for the first half and then instructional systems technology the second half and they're going to change the name soon so who knows what it will be in it's an amalgamation of all things today learning design and technology excellent yeah so it's a special treat for us to have uh, professor um, Kurt Bonk with us today and we will just be chatting a bit about the tech variety model. Now, back in 2014, I had the privilege of working with Kurt on the tech variety um, uh, uh, book, uh, which is part of your reading um, for, uh, for this particular module on uh, motivation, interaction, and engagement. Um, and and now uh, I'll just say, Elaine, two things. She said to introduce me twice, in case she has to delete that first introduction because I messed up somewhere. And the second is, she said this, we worked on this book in 2014, but you know, that's when the book came out. That's we worked right. on it for many years before that. This is the, these things don't magically appear. Uh, I had the idea for the book first off around 2000. Mm. And then I recruited Elaine because she was doing such a wonderful dissertation that fit the book so well that we organized the ideas for that that book it was 2011 mm. in melbourne australia right. on the streets of a cafe somewhere and so 2011 to 2014 that's three years a little over that to get that book out so and now there's a new version she'll probably tell you about that's free and online as well that's oh, right yeah yes. so there are Two free books y'all can have. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. Yeah, so the 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 ideas for the book has been a long time um, percolating, um, but the book did come out in two thousand and fourteen, and it was um, um, it's been a privilege to work with you on the book, Kurt. Um, so, guys, yes. you organized me, Elaine. I wouldn't have got it done without you. So <laughs> thank you, thank you kindly. Um. So today for, for our class, I, I thought we would just talk about, you know, some of the extension of ideas from the book. So for, for those of you who have read the, read the um, introductory chapter, you know that there are 10 principles and out of those 10 principles, uh, they, are all, they, have, uh, they have 10 associated activities with each of those principles. Yeah, and those principles are tone, um, encouragement, curiosity, variety, um, autonomy, relevance, interactivity, engagement, um, tension, as well as yielding products. Um, so that's the tech variety acronym for standing uh, um, uh, for each of those um, principles. So altogether, we've got 100 plus activities um, that emanated from those 10 principles. So we're just going to have a little chat now with um, Professor Bonk to ask him a, a couple of questions in terms of where he sees the framework as um, heading uh, in this in today's um, pandemic post pandemic um, online learning world. So, Kurt, the first question um, I'd like to throw um, at you is this idea of um, the framework. The framework when we looked at it um, when we when it when it first came out in two thousand and fourteen. Can you comment today now that we are in you know post uh, uh, quite a few years down the track? Can you comment on whether the framework is still relevant and what are some trends um, that have come up since in terms of online motivation? So as Elaine points out we're a little further on the track. There's a little more, a little less tread on our tires left. Uh, <laughs> she didn't say, you're getting old, Kurt. You know, she was kind nope. about it anyhow. Uh, but she wants to know, even though I thought of the idea over two decades ago, and we wrote on the idea approximately one decade ago. Is it still relevant? Mm. What's emerged today to 
maybe contend with that model or extend that model in some way. Let's yeah. take the first one. Let's look at yeah. that. Is it relevant? The purpose behind that framework and also my second one, it's called the R2D2 model, read, reflect, display, and do. These two frameworks or models really exist with us or should exist and carry with us no matter the technologies, mm -hmm. no matter the pedagogical innovations that we might try out. Mm -hmm. they, can, they are meant to withstand the test of time. And it's a framework. It's, it's, that's one thing that Tech Variety was meant to do. It's a framework that can work in 2014, 2015, 2023, 24, 2030. Hopefully, it will continue to work. It may, be, it may need to be tweaked or added to, or you may have to do other kinds of things in addition to using that framework. But it does serve that purpose uh, because it doesn't have a specific technology we, you need to use to have it work. The technologies come and go all the time. It's a little daunting for instructors, in fact, to keep up with all the ones mm -hmm. that they're asked by their deans or the department chair or their colleagues and their friends or the technology staff. Says, well, it would really be great if you could use chat GPT, you know, or whatever other new technology uh, is mm, currently in the news. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. The framework doesn't, it, it can adapt, it can adopt those new and emerging technologies that we may be experimenting with, or we may have tried and tested them out many times and, and maybe are going to tweak them a little bit. So a couple of things there. Third, because of the attention that online learning has got during the pandemic, and also the attention that online learning got back in 1997 and 98, 99, in the early days, and all the attention that online learning got, you know, around 10 years ago when universities started putting master's degrees on the online, you know, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of them started putting certificates online. We've gone through phases, right? And some try to create blended learning environments or hybrid learning environments. Or we all cycle through these phases and they're asking people to read and read and adapt and utilize. Well, you can't read all the research that's out there. There's no way that anyone can. And you get panic attacks. You get terror attacks to try to keep up. What this framework is really meant to do, or one of the reasons, is yeah. to lower the tension levels that you have when you're thinking about switching a course to an online environment or a program or a certificate or just an activity. So if you're a, a newbie to online teaching and learning, the framework becomes a, a safe harbor for you to try things out. It be, it's not a pacifier, but it's, it's a psychological safety. In fact, the first principle is just that, psychological safety and building comfort with your students. And so uh, you do not have to read everything that's out there. And you do not have to use every principle in the framework. And we say in the book, you if you utilize three or four different um, uh, psychological constructs, whether it's interactivity or feedback or whatever. And by the way, the framework has 10 things, but within each of the 10, there's several psychological constructs embedded in them. So you take a look uh, closely at the framework. It's based on a hundred years of research on motivation, uh, probably over a hundred years from the behaviorists, from the cognitivists, from the social constructivists or whomever. They've all lent something important to the literature. You know, B.F. Skinner lent something important to the literature in terms of online, in terms of feedback structures and, and shaping and so forth, positive mm -hmm. reinforcement. And, and the cognitivists did as well, and the constructivists did as well. So it's, a, it's an amalgamation of different aspects of psychology into one place. And so we don't have to fight it. So the fourth thing, we're not going to fight anymore about which is the best. So the reason to create frameworks is to say, everything works to some degree. Let's be eclectic about it and pick what works in this moment in time, in your particular context, if you will. And, and that's extremely important or at least it was when I started in the field, because there are fights all over the place. And there are other reasons that we want to have the, this, this um, tech variety model, because number five, 
You can talk to others. You can have a language about what you're doing. You can say, I'm trying out engagement of the Tech Friday model or principle uh, of engagement or in interactivity or relevance or whatever it is that you're trying. And others will respond because they may have read it, may have heard about it, may have tried it. So it becomes a, a mechanism for collaboration, for conversation, for communication with your colleagues, with others that you might run into. And maybe that is the most important reason we developed the Tech Variety Framework. So those are five reasons. I know we need to go on to the other questions, but I'll just say that uh, really, I in the early days, I would get tomatoes thrown at me because people didn't want to switch, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, they, 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 those tomatoes, you know, turned into, you know, kind greetings when COVID happened because people really needed some training and what to do. And, yeah. and you can, and so six, I guess you get out of six is it's easy to train from it. It's easy to say, this is an example of number one. This is number two, number three. It, it's, it's something that when you see it in action, people resonate with it. So mm -hmm. that too is extremely important. And again, I could go on. It's a comparison. You compare to other models and so forth. Elaine, did you have any follow-up to question one or you want to move on to question two? Oh, uh, just to follow up from the, your first, from, from what you said just now that it, that people have, have, have common language yeah, to communicate with as well as to try out and to put into actions. Um, could you um, just briefly highlight what are some of the areas of application of the model of the framework that you have come across that you know of? Well, I published a piece in the medical field. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the medical field has wonderful journals related to education, med uh, medical educator and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and others. So I would say I have seen doctors come to conferences in distance learning and are taking uh, copious notes on on any they can get get a hold of uh, because they've not been trained in this area. In fact, um, I've seen I've seen a couple of doctors who have actually added a second degree in the field. They've gotten interested in in this area uh, and more than a couple. In fact, I I know the University of Houston has started a special doctoral program for the medical field. So I say medical field in particular uh, is an area. Of, I was I was using it with our online MBA program people in the business field, right? And again, very similar in that regard. And they've they've ramped up an online program extremely fast. And students are now moving to MBAs in online formats, but their faculty haven't been trained how to teach in general, let alone how to teach in an online or blended kind of environment. So uh, business faculty, medical faculty in, in particular, but you could almost go to any field. And and find a application of this of the model uh, within it. I know in the military that I've worked with, we we applied it there and, and with um, uh, people who are in the National Guard here and and getting uh, some ex extra training in a blended format. So military language learning instruction, Fine. you know, uh, are you trying to make it relevant and interactive and conversational and so forth? The training. The language education journals today are exploding, actually. People want to learn languages. They're finding that online, they can store resources. They can hear people's different, you know, different languages. They can, you know, they can create cases, uh, examples, and so forth that can be reused, right, over time. Uh -huh. They can be remixed. They can be structured and changed. So the area of language learning with the Tech Variety model uh, is a rich, and there are just almost any area that, that we could think of. Right. There are examples. And that's why we have all the examples in the book, and we try and contextualize them and, and put them in. A, this was in a psychology example or a sociology or, you know, as I, as we talked about med, the medical field, nursing example, or occupational therapy and so forth. Right. And now, Kurt, do you think that there are aspects of the framework that's more important than others? We've had yeah, this question really from... Really good question. Yeah. You know, I had 30% dropout rates in my courses until adding number one. Uh, so tone or climate or psychological safety and having online icebreakers, I went to almost zero dropping my 
online classes from 30 to 40 percent. So I would have said number one is the most important. And many people would agree with me because it kind of sets the stage. It creates a learning environment. And we're moving to creating not, you know, cognitively based in, uh, instruction or behaviorally based. We're creating learning environments, which is all, learn again, all learning theories. And number one probably best displays that. But there are other people who say that problem-based learning is the most important thing. And uh, building products, which is number 10 on the list. Yeah. And there are, there are people, goal-based scenarios. Roger Shank, who recently passed away, really believed in goal having goals to strive for. And, and so the case could be made that number 10 is the most important in the list. But then we get it to people who might talk about engagement. It's a fuzzy concept. It's difficult to define. But it more, the more engaged you are in your environment, the less likely you are to drop out or to get behind or procrastinate and so forth, the more likely you are to help your peers succeed and so forth. So the case could be made that number eight, the case could be made that number two, feedback, feedback loops, right? Yeah. From the system, computer-based feedback, instructor-based feedback, expert-based feedback, peer-based feedback. And you could have multiple instructors in a course, instructor-based and self-feedback. And there might be other things I'm missing, but there are many forms of feedback. And mo most of the time in a face-to-face setting, you can only give feedback to a couple of people. Online, people tend to want feedback on everything they do for everybody. And it's really difficult for an instructor to give feedback to everyone. So number two could be deemed to be the most important. I could make the case for each of the 10 being the most important. I guess that's my point, Dylan that you know, it may depend on your context and the course. It may depend on your style of teaching and instruction. You yeah. know, it may be the level of the course. Maybe number one isn't as important with a cohort-based group in a third or fourth semester of uh, a sequence. Maybe number one drops out as very important. Even maybe number 10 drops out as, as not as important. And maybe number two and some other ones might emerge uh, later on. Mm. Uh, so, you know, the variety might emerge as one of the most, you know, uh, autonomy uh, as you move up in the program, autonomy and empowerment become more and more important because you're taking over, you're self-directing your learning. So that's, so the emphasis might change. Yeah, that that's, that's really nice because with the different, um, with the, it depends on the level of learners, depends on the context depends on the subject matter, depends on where your learners are placed in the program, first years versus second years versus third years. Um, yeah, and your own teaching style, yeah, which, which all um, determines which of those aspects of that framework comes into form more, than, more so than others. I agree with you that the first one, that tone, setting that psychological safety is crucial. I think it, regardless of whichever context, it's always that first day of class, uh, you know, welcoming people and, and uh, uh, um, making them feel, you know, welcome. Um, well, Elaine, do you remember which chapter was the most downloaded in the first six months? Wasn't it the first one? Well, it was started with the first one, but ended up being the third one on curiosity. Mm. Curiosity ended up uh, getting a lot, a lot of downloads, but it went back and forth between the first one and the third one, actually. Mm. So, Yeah. And engagement got quite a few downloads as well. So for your for your students, uh, we had 250,000 downloads of the book in the first couple of years, and then the counter stopped working. So we do not know how many have been downloaded. And that included about 20 or 30,000 in Chinese. So the book is available in Chinese as well as English. Yes, yeah. Um, the, the the last and final question for you, Kurt, is that in today's post in today's pandemic post pandemic online learning context, how do you see this framework as um, being helpful or facilitative? Let me ask you a question. Were my first two answers good enough? I think so. I think okay. you covered that. There's a singer called Meatloaf. He has a, a song, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. So if I can't answer the third question all that well, uh, there we go. We've got two out of three. Now, I think you were asking about how, the, how it holds up during the pandemic. And, you know, the thing about the pandemic that was different than any other moment in the history of education of mm. humans on this planet 
is that whether you are teaching in college settings, higher education, tertiary education, or you're teaching in, in K-12, you know, secondary and primary schools, or you're working in a corporate setting and, and teach, tr doing training and, or government settings, in every particular scenario, people were forced to learn in not school, not school land, home or some other place, you know, you yeah. found back on your patio or something. We were learning apart from other human beings. We only saw each other this way through the through the ether, right? And so when you have millions of people, really we had billions of people, but let's say mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of people having to, and teachers in particular, and students having to change where and when they were learning or teaching, um, that had a dramatic effect on people. And the immediate thing is people are doing emergency remote teaching, is, which is not the same as high quality distance education. That was going back to shovelware. We're shoveling stuff up from the face-to-face -face environment and, and putting it up in, in an online class in, a, in the web. And when that happens, we have inferior learning happening and you have people scrambling. You have sc scramble education. And, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to have people scrambling to be just just enough, just good enough. We really yeah. want to go well beyond that. But when you're in scramble mode, you're reaching for anything. And the tech variety model, again, serves them well because at least they can say they were trying to abide by sound psychological principles, sound instructional principles within their teaching and learning environments, even though they didn't maybe fully understand all aspects of the tech variety framework, you know, they they could they could ramp up a little bit or a little bit at a time by reading a chapter at a time, for instance, and thinking about how to utilize them. So the tech variety framework then again became something to talk about with others, share. A lot of people told me, and I'm sure Elaine too, that they use the tech variety model during this ramping up to uh, during COVID times. I'm sure you got contacted by people saying, you know, I'm utilizing it. Just this week, we were contacted by someone in Brazil who's trying to translate it to Portuguese. You know, people found, you know, found out about it. When the book first came out nine years ago, we had hundreds of thousands of people downloading it and sharing with others. I think when COVID happened, there was a similar uh, phenomenon that was happening where people were sharing that book and other free resources that they found. It wasn't the only thing uh, on the block. You know, they, I'm sure they found other frameworks, models, and free and open online resources that they could utilize. It, it became one piece of the puzzle to try and ramp up uh, the world in terms of training for online environments. So having that resource available to folks was something that we we gave free to the world at the time and we never we didn't think COVID we had no clue COVID yeah. was going to happen but um actually there's a conference called a a a a c e um the association for advancement of computers and education which put our book up on their library in the early days and there were a lot of downloads that happened from that website i, I know in new zealand it was put up on a website somewhere that had that tens of thousands of downloads from there. So many people were sharing it. Uh, it was also translated into Arabic in the early days and, and all across the higher colleges of technologies, the HCT within uh, the United Arab Emirates were utilizing it. People in Saudi Arabia were utilizing it. People in military bases in the United States were utilizing it. Uh, is are unknown um, places that were, were u using it, but we were contacted by a, a number of folks that I tried saving in the early days and trying to document all the uh, instantiations or uses of the, the framework and the downloads for the book, but it was worldwide. It yeah. was exciting, you know, yeah. and um, it was interesting to have an impact in that way on, on people. Yeah, no, that's cool. Thank you so much, Kurt. I think that's helpful to give the book uh, to give the framework, put the framework into context in today's um, light of the pandemic, post-pandemic um, online learning um, 
uh, and environment. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you so much, Kurt, um, for, for giving um, my class some insights into um, how, how the, the tech variety model can be extended and used today. And, and it's really exciting that it's still being um, used and we're still being contacted by people that it's, that, who have found it helpful. So yeah, great to work with you on it. Any famous last words? Wait, wait. There's a free book, a new book, and a free class from the Commonwealth of Learning that Elaine took the lead on. And there's videos of each of us. So it's a shorter, if you don't read the long book, if you want something more current and shorter and actually pretty slick, pretty, pretty um, sophisticated or elegant in terms of the design, the instructional design, our friends at the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver um, in particular, Sanjay Mishra and his staff have asked us to, you know, create a newer or updated version. And we said yes to that. And it came out last September. So about right. six months ago or seven months ago, it came out. And Dr. Ko will share that with all of you. Um, but it's available at the Commonwealth of Learning. You go to col.org. Mm. And I think Elaine can tell you a little bit more about how to access that book. Mm. Um, and it's pretty slick. It's pretty nice. I, I'm, so you have two, two now free books to, to download. I'll mention a third one. I recently edited the online learning journal special issue of the research on online learning, systematic reviews of the research. And that came out two weeks ago or th three or four weeks ago uh, at OLJ. So if you go to the online learning journal, or go to my homepage, kurtbonk.com. You can download all three different books. Um, that, be, that, that special issues of the research, though. And so it backs up teaching in online environments. So anyways, uh, people like free. So free, free, free. And actually, three is number four, is the free class around the new book. Mm. So take a look. Yes. Yeah, I'll remember to put that resource in, in, in the resources page in our class. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Oh, well, it's nice meeting all of you. Yeah, thank you so much, Kurt, and have a have a lovely evening in Indiana, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good. See everybody. <laughs> Take care.